do subscribe to Ikeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering, HSE and IIT JE main and advanced videos. Hello students, today we are studying chapter human health and diseases. In that, we are studying topic innate immunity. When I say innate, it means a newborn child. So how is the immunity in a newborn child? Let's study and find out. Innate immunity. Now when I break that word innate immunity, innate means inborn or newly born. When a child is just newly born, don't you think so that the immunity levels of the child would be quite low? Obviously, he's just born or she's just born. Also, when a child is just born, his exposure to atmosphere, to surrounding would be very different and very slow. So at that time, he's just trying to develop his immunity level. And innate immunity is that immunity that is present at the time of birth. Yes, it is present at the time of birth. Now, it will compromise of all the defense cells. It is present at the time of birth. You are born with it. You are born with your innate immunity. It is given to you by your mother. Innate immunity is a kind of immunity which cannot be differentiated into different, different patterns. In totality, if I say, it tries to find out or fight out every pathogen that surrounds. It cannot fight to that great level, but it actually tries to fight out. Now, four different types of barriers or you can say walls or fighting mechanisms are present in innate immunity. First fighting mechanism is the outer or you can say the superficial fighting mechanism, your skin. Your skin is never permeable to every material that you are exposed to. It will never allow certain materials inside your body. In fact, I can say your skin is impermeable to most of the materials that are present out there. Second is your body pH. Now, our body pH is certain that it does not allow most of the organisms to harbor in our body. Set, thirdly, body secretions. Now, whenever we sweat, there are certain acids, certain chemicals, certain salts secreted through the set, which forms an alkaline or certain times acidic environment. And in that acidic environment, pathogens or microbes or fungus cannot harbor. It means they cannot stay or survive. WBCs, white blood cells, leukocytes, neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, all the complexes of WBC machinery or fighting mechanisms. Lastly, histamines or inflammatory complexes. Now, whenever there is histamine formation, I can say histamines are nothing but they are a signaling molecule or a molecule that is inflamed or signaled whenever there is some wrong mechanism or wrong processes going inside our body. Histamines sh show a symptom of redness, inflammation, burning, itching, that's inflammatory reactions basically done by histamine. They are also a part of innate immunity response. Innate immunity. I can say in simple language, inborn immunity or the immunity that was present when you were born, present at the time of your birth, or present when you were born with it. Also termed as non specific immunity. Now, why innate immunity is termed as non specific immunity is because every immunity type has a particular order or particular fashion that it follows. For example, your T cells are directed to do only certain functions, your B cells are directed to do only certain functions. They never crisscross or exchange their functions. But immune immunity or innate immunity does every function together or in totality, if I can say. Now, they are present from the time of your birth. You were born with it. It is one capacity of a body to resist the phagocytic harmful cells as well as pathogens.
the part of innate immunity are many as we all know that innate immunity is non specific it is not directed or not restricted to only one part for example skin or small microspore membrane or microporous membranes that are present on the upper layer of the skin you can talk about epithelium or just a surface above that that prevent the entry of microorganism we all know that our skin is almost impermeable to most of the material and that what helps or provide you can say the anatomical or the upper barrier or the first barrier of a body secondly your body temperature now our body temperature is almost 37 degrees celsius it's 37 degrees celsius at any point of time in a day under unless someone is dead the body temperature is going to be 37 degrees celsius so that does not allow to harbor organisms that grow below it or above it secondly ph now body makes ph and our body ph is alkaline it's neither acidic nor basic at an alkaline ph organisms which are acidic or basic in nature would find difficulty in growing now body secretions if i talk about this could include salts which are removed especially during secretions of any sweat and those salts may be harmful for the growth of certain organisms hcl now we all know that our stomach consists of hcl and the ph is almost equal to lab ph acidic 3.5 this HCl is harmful for the growth of stomach organisms at such high acidity. Any organisms cannot harbor in stomach. Gastric juices, whether we talk about pepsin, trypsin, any one of them, they don't allow the growth of microorganisms. Now, phagocytic barriers. When I say phagocytics, those are organisms which actually engulf. When I say engulf, they totally eat the harmful microorganisms. For example, your WBCs or white blood cells, monocytes are type of WBCs. Whereas histamines give inflammatory responses. Students, in this part of the chapter, what we came across was what was innate immunity and how does innate immunity actually works. I hope you all are very clear about this concept of innate immunity. Thank you.